My name is Dr. Bira Tharman, and I am an addictions physician working out of Toronto, Canada. Today, I want to talk about relapse. Why does it occur and why does it get harder over time? Can we ever get relief from constant cravings to use our drug? I'm particularly interested today in sugar and processed food addiction because I believe that although the numbers suggest it's only 15% of the population, like maybe alcohol, I think it must actually be closer to 50%, especially to amongst those who struggle with their weight. So I'm going to cover the biological and psychological underpinnings of relapse, ending with the critical solution of, ab of abstinence to achieve long-term sobriety. Now let's look at this chart, which illustrates the dopamine spike associated with various drugs, including food, which can range from 150 to 200 units compared to the baseline of 100 units. Our baseline without drugs that are just there for us to enjoy life. Substances like nicotine, opiates, alcohol, and refined sugar can double or even quadruple this level, leading to a significant reward response in the brain. When a person lives in the higher ranges for longer than the brain can tolerate, tolerance develops and the process of addiction is now underway. Hey, it's just the brain doing its job in a context of too much dopamine, too much drug, too much food. Now, when we talk about addiction, whether it's to substances like alcohol or sugar or processed foods, the brain undergoes similar neurochemical changes. Doesn't matter what the drug is or even behavior is. At first, you will remember there is the supercharge of dopamine, which feels good, it feels great. You might see that in the recreational phases, but then as tolerance develops, euphoria dims down and you need more and more of the drug to get the same effect. So now you're moving from recreational use to a more harmful use. Eventually, there's just no more good feeling and you just use so that you don't feel bad. That's dependence. And actually, in the language of operate conditioning, which is how we understand how addiction works on a psychological level, this is called negative reinforcement. That's as opposed to the positive reinforcement of the recreational use of euphoria. Now you're using just so that you don't feel bad. These changes can lead to a state that we use in the addiction circles called hypercatophia a term that describes intense negative emotional states that occur simply because the substance is no longer present. This state can include feelings of anxiety, irritability, and dysphoria, just don't feel well. You feel that whenever you feel deprived of, of your favorite food, you have that feeling of, oh, I really wish I could have this. And all you can think about is the food and how awful you feel when you don't have the food. Now, what's interesting is that this condition, this situation of hypercatechia or withdrawal worsens with each withdrawal episode, making the experience of quitting increasingly unpleasant. The person becomes less and less willing to try again because each time it seems to get harder. And then when you fall, the fall is harder. This is particularly relevant for people with sugar and processed food addiction because these substances are ubiquitous, they're everywhere, and their consumption is so socially encouraged that it makes it really hard to be abstinent. And so people slip repeatedly, sometimes in one day, sometimes multiple times in one day. Now, what's the backstory? Why is this happening? From a neurological point of view, the brain's reward system, including the amygdala, become less responsive to dopamine over time due to the downregulation of receptors. We've already talked about that's tolerance. This means that the individual no longer experiences the same level of pleasure from everyday activities and becomes more sensitive to the substance absence. It hurts more each time when you don't have that drug, when you have nothing, because even regular normal activities are no longer pleasant. They're just not pleasant enough, put it that way. Then, because you don't have your substance, the stress piece response kicks in. Now we have our instinctual impulse to protect ourselves from pain that's kicking in. Forget about looking for the good feeling. You just want to feel better. So you've got a double whammy. You don't feel any pleasure and you feel the stress trying to avoid the pain of withdrawal. The result is a powerful drive to use in an attempt to regain the last pleasure or at the very least to escape the discomfort of hypercatophia or withdrawal. Plus, 
the more a person uses their rational, we call the executive part of our brain, weakens under the pressure of urges, making it harder and harder to say no, to stop, to control your use. Finally, the hippocampus, that part of our brain that encodes short-term memory, also gets worn out, making it harder to remember the negative consequences of previous uses. You feel the urge to use, but you forget what happened in the past. You forget how awful it is five minutes after you've used. You've heard the phrase, the definition of insanity, to do the same thing each time expecting different results. That's essentially the definition of addiction. How do you get out of this mess? Abstinence. Abstinence from the addictive substance is the only way out of this spiral towards misery and disaster. By removing the substance, whether it be alcohol or drug or food, the brain can begin to heal, executive functions and ward pathway. A recalibration of downregulated receptors occur. In other words, they become upregulated back to normal, as it were, and rationality returns so that you can say yes or no. And memory kicks in, reminding you of what will happen if you use again. To spell it out. For those with sugar and processed food addictions or any addiction, this means eliminating these items from your life, from your diet if it's food, as moderation will just lead to that slippery slope back into addictive patterns. And it appears that even when a person is in recovery, the addiction is still idling in the background, like a vehicle in the background waiting to race ahead. We are essentially always addicts but in remission we're not completely cured we look pretty good but we're still addicts in remission in conclusion while the journey to recovery can be difficult there is hope by understanding why relapse occurs why it is so painful and seems to get harder over time and then adhering to the principles of relapse prevention especially abstinence number one a person can eventually achieve a happy and sustainable recovery. Lots of people do it, but abstinence has to be the first step. I hope that this talk has given you some hope. Let's continue to support each other in this journey. The power is ours. Thank you.